guys, they're here. The HSF hoodie in the original black and red. Rex, look how big he's getting. Rex, watch this. Hey, ow! Down. Oh my God. <laughs> Billy, why are you so PO'd? I wanted to start on the Cowie engine today, but I just don't know if I really feel like it, you know? I just don't know if I feel like it today. I know it's gonna take me hours to just, I've never worked on one of these. I'm gonna have to read the book. And I know it's gonna take me forever to put the bottom end together. So I think I'm just gonna do some piddly stuff around here. We're waiting on something to get here that's I told myself I wasn't gonna do this. I told myself I wasn't gonna do it. That I was just gonna do a stock mod build, just do some dampening rods and some heavy duty springs in the forks. Well, guess what? I freaking caved, cause I, I, I think it was a good deal. I'm pretty sure it was a good deal. Um, and I'm waiting on it to get here. The pro circuit off of my KLX 110L, it did sell. So you guys can stop asking me if it sold. Uh, it did it did sell and I had to go back and watch that video again because like so many people were asking me how much I wanted for it and if I could ship it that I had to go back and watch it and make sure that I said that I wanted $115 shipped to the lower 48 states which means every United State except for Hawaii and Alaska. That means you could PayPal me $115, friends and family, and get it shipped to you if you lived in the lower 48 states. That's what that meant. But I still had people asking me how much I wanted for it, how much it would be to ship it to them. AX450, I haven't got to really do anything to it since the last video. My gas tank came in and I think I'm picking it up tomorrow. It's going to look like most of the Cowies out there. Technically, it's gonna be special, right guys? To be a 13 model that looks like a newer model and it's gonna have spring forks instead of those crappy air forks. This is what I was waiting for to show up. Ordered it the other day. Uh, let me make sure you guys can still see it. Yeah, you guys can. Ordered it the other day and it came in already. I told myself I was not going to do this but i ended up doing it anyway and i marked out my address so i don't get any pipe bombs in my mailbox because that would suck that would totally ruin my money maker you know what i'm saying i'd have to call the cops on you guys and put you in jail and stuff like that and that would that would just ruin both of our christmases i'm gonna open this up and then i'll explain to you guys what's in the box for the for the people that don't have eyes Oh, here we go. Oops. What the hell? Wiper blade, windshield wiper, $30. Why is there a receipt for that in here? Yeah. Woo! This is lit. This is a, um, I was told it was a, uh, KTM, uh, no, I know it's a KTM uh, 65. I told, I was told this is a 2007 KTM 65 uh, set of forks and triples. So the new build that I'm doing is, if you guys didn't watch the end of the last video, I explained that I'm doing a new build for KLX 110, blah, 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 whatever. Most of you guys that don't watch the end of the videos don't know shit. So that's your own fault. This is a 2007, supposedly, I don't know. I haven't really looked it over. I, I'm pretty sure it is. 2007 KTM 65 front end with triple clamps. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna be running inverted forks on the new KLX build. And I'm pretty excited about that. You can get a bearing set, a tapered bearing set from Pax Racing that allows this to bolt right on to the neck of the KLX frame. It's not going to be the old style plastic like the frame is supposed to have. It's going to be the new plastic, the 2010 and up plastic like my 110L because I already picked up. <coughs> shit, I got something in my throat and I'm about to die. <coughs> Damn. Supposedly, you could shave down the inside of the shrouds to make it fit with the older gas tank but i got a, a extremely good deal on a newer style gas tank 
for only $50. Even ordered the Flow Green front fender and number plate from UFO that Factory Mini Bikes is selling right now. It's a pre-order. If you guys head over there, you guys can pre-order the number plate and front fender. Also, this just came in. If you guys watched the last pit bike video where I did my FMF 4.1 exhaust, you guys seen that they sent me the wrong pilot jet. So I had, I messaged him and he had no problems with sending me a new one. Imagine if this was the same uh, size pilot that I already had. But he sent me the right size pilot so I think I'm just going to go ahead and put it in if you guys are cool with that. Oh, you guys are cool with that? All right, cool beans. Hope you guys are stoked on this. This is pretty badass. So the build's kind of turning into a full mod. It's going to have a huge engine. It's going to have decent suspension and it's going to look pretty cool. So, and it's definitely, definitely going to have black wheels on it. All right, I think I just found the problem. I think it's got an intake leak. I'm gonna pull that apart, make a gasket, put some gasket maker on top of the gasket so it's really sticky and not sucky airy. That didn't fix it 100%, but um, I sprayed some more carb or brake cleaner on there, and I think it still has a little bit of an air leak. So I'm gonna take it completely apart off camera, 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 and really clean it up good. Are you taking out the trash? No, I'm just taking it out. Sorry, you can take it out. Oh, thank you. There you go. Me and the lady at the dollar store got us talking about cat food, and I was just like, and then we started talking about dog food. Well, which one tastes the best? Oh, oh big you dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> Since I started making this video, I actually acquired some more parts for some different projects. Um, if you guys watched, I'm sure some of you guys have already seen the bottom end of the new project. But the uh, board cases for the 178, if you guys don't know already, I'm making a 195 stroker KLX 110. It's going to have a 178 sleeve with the stroker crank and it should make it like a 195. And uh, there's the bottom end cases for it, a clutch cover and some of the shifting mechanisms. I have one of the brake drums. Um, I got the little brake stay for the rear, the stock kicker. Transmission, I think the transmission needs second gear though. Second gear is pretty roached. I'm pretty sure this is second gear. Frame and swing arm and all that, like the chassis stuff that I have was, out of, was off of O2. But like the uh, this engine and the bottom end stuff is out of 04, I believe. So it's kind of the same from like 03 to 07, I believe. Stock stuff. And then 08 got like the uh, 08 and 09 got the heavy duty uh, output shaft and stuff like that. But uh, here is the stock crank, which I'm not going to be using. But it is still a, a st good stock crank. And then I got the head studs and time and chain tensioner. And uh, as you guys seen, I got the KTM 65 forks. This thing looks almost brand new and it's the newer style tank. So it's like my 110L, it's like the 2010 uh, to present KLX tank where the shrouds go over it. And I picked this up for like 50 bucks and I kept seeing them sell for like 150. So I was like, screw it. I'm just gonna, I needed a gas tank and since I got this one, I guess I'm just going to run the newer style plastics on it. Two Brothers Kicker, which I know uh, they're not as strong as stock, but my 2010 kicks really easy. So I'm just going to put 
this kicker on the 110L, and then I'm going to take the 110L kicker and put it on the new build. So, oh yeah, the only reason I got this is because it was brand new and I only paid $45 shipped. So, usually they're like $90 uh, shipped on eBay. So, I can't really beat that. I did get a RMS oversized gas tank for the KX450, and as you guys can tell, it's not black. Pretty disappointed that I... I can't get a black tank. Uh, this is the natural color where you can kind of see the gas in there. They said it was going to be two months. They said it was going to be eight weeks until I was going to be able to get a black IMS tank because it's special order. I think I can cover most of it with graphics and the stuff that I can't. Um, I do have vinyl wrap that's just gloss black that I could probably put on there. Until I get my dry break, I had Jody just grab me this. Uh, it'll just be like that until I get me the dry break receiver. To be honest, it really doesn't look that bad. I'm gonna try my best to cover this whole tank. The stuff that the graphics kit don't cover, I'll use my extra vinyl and try to cover it up. I cut two intake gaskets out of this gasket maker stuff. Now I'm letting them cure because I put gasket maker over top of them to kind of seal them. <laughs> I think I finally fixed my problem. I didn't film it, but I adjusted the uh, valves on it. The intake was super tight and then the uh, exhaust was a little bit loose. So I tightened the exhaust up a little bit and then I adjusted the uh, intake, uh, loosened, no, yeah, loosened the intake and then I tightened the exhaust up a little bit. And now it starts so good. Let's see this. Look at that. been pissing me off for the longest time that's kind of why I didn't film it because I was getting pretty frustrated oh. I was about ready to give up that was the last thing I was gonna do and then I was just gonna say screw it but yeah I guess the uh, intake valve was it was probably damn near zeroed out so that isn't good for the seats but yeah she starts really good now and it idles good now so that was a two birds with one stone i put the uh two brothers kickstarter on this because i'm not saving it for the new one because they are known to snap with uh, bigger engine builds and this one i'm pretty sure has the uh has a decompression cam in it because it kicks uh, really easy. So, uh, well, hold on. Let me feel it now. Actually, it's got some compression behind the kicker now since the valve isn't bleeding off compression. But uh, it's still, yeah, she's got some good compression. So that's awesome. That has been bugging me for the longest time. It not it not idling correctly, and the electric start not working like how it should. And I knew I knew better. I should I should have checked the valves first, but I really just didn't think somebody neglected it that much, and just continuously wrote it and wrote it and wrote it and wrote it and wrote it without adjusting the valves. But people prove you wrong every day. It's got the correct valve adjustment, and there's no in intake leak on it now. The intake, I think it did have a little bit of an intake leak. There's no intake leak. The valves are in spec and it's jetted properly. So it should be a pretty strong runner. But it just starts so amazing now. It's just like I don't even have to give it any gas. Like it just starts right up and that's so awesome. I want to see if this thing will start good cold. Pull, I'm going to pull the choke and let's see if it'll start good. I gotta turn the choke off. 
Damn, that's badass. You guys have no idea how happy that makes me. Runs 10 times better now. It's crazy how much better something will run when you don't neglect it and you actually take care of it. I was looking on uh, YouTube the other day and I actually seen like some old GNCC videos that they've been uploading on Racer X TV. Oh, and I found Dustin on there from 2008 when he was in XC2. A lot of you guys ask like, um, some of you guys have asked like, is Dustin an old pro or blah, 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 to do this? Well, he used to race used to race XC2. I don't I don't know if he ever raced XC1. He might have, I'm not sure. But uh this this clip is from when he was in XC2 on a YZ250F. Um yeah, and he actually won. It was like the fourth round. I think it was like at Big Buck or something like that. But uh yeah, I'm going to throw this clip in there and I don't know, it's just funny to see like 2008. I mean, that's like 10 years ago. He looks a lot younger. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty funny, and I, yeah, he ended up winning, and, like, there was a bunch of people in XC2 at the time, like, uh, current pros like Thad Duvall and Caleb Russell, and he beat them that day, so, yeah, check out that clip, then after you check out that clip, head over to GarrettReal.shop, get you guys some merch, thank you guys that have already bought stuff, I have no idea how much of a help and how appreciative I am of that it is amazing you guys actually buying stuff to support the channel and stuff like that it's awesome we're going to the sand pits tomorrow it's gonna to be nice Nick's bringing his CR 500 over and sees a hard charging Gibson rolling into the number one position late in the race heartbreak for Weisenfels Duval who's in third takes a look to his left and sees now I'm in second Finally, Weisenfels gets his bike out of the mud, but the damage is done. Dustin Gibson, from way back in the pack, is going to knock off Duval, Weisenfels, and the rest. Take his first win of the season. Dustin Gibson, your XC2 winner. That went down the first lap, uh, second turn. Just started picking it up and passing everybody, and finally got around, and, uh, I don't know, up to fifth or fourth or so. And they kept giving me a pit board, and I kept getting closer and closer. And really, not any battles. When I passed somebody, I passed them, and that was it. And uh, I didn't even know I was leading until I came in and they and then I seen number one and and that was it, so I didn't even know I was winning. <laughs>